welcome to our grade and science tutorial. Our topic for today is all about the plate tectonic. Investigating the ocean drilling. The theory of plate tectonics provides a comprehensive way of explaining how the major continents and ocean basins formed over time. It also shows the causes and distributions of mountains, earthquakes, and volcanoes. A number of scientific expeditions have been conducted to determine the edges of the ocean floor to provide the evidence of sea floor spreading, a major principle of plate tectonic. One of the first was performed by the Glomar Challenger from 1968 to 1983. This drilling ship proved the floor of the South Atlantic as part of the research done by the Deep Sea Drilling Project. Sea floor spreading has created the floor of the Atlantic Ocean over the past 180 million years. Upwelling and spreading of magma continuously adds oceanic lithosphere equally to the edges of two diverging plates. As it moves away from the ridge, it gradually cools and contrasts, increasing its density. Crease crossing the mid-Atlantic ridge, handed the poles and drilled through layers of sediments and down into basaltic rocks of the oceanic crest. Core samples of ocean floor sediment and rocks were brought aboard the drilling vessel in hollow drill pipes. The samples were analyzed by the researchers to determine their age using a microfossil and radiometric dating techniques. The outcome of this research provided conclusive evidence of sea floor spreading and their pore plate tectonics. Sediments begin to accumulate soon after the oceanic crust forms. Remains of microscopic organisms found in the oldest sediment in the core sample are used to date the sea floor at that site. Microfossils, tiny animals, and plant remains offer known ages. By observing which microfossils are most prevalent in the sediment samples, ocean floor ages can be determined. Some common types of microfossils are poriminifera, diatoms, and radioloria. The deep sea drilling program and your earlier investigation show that the oceanic crust is geologically youthful and as it moves from mid-Atlantic reach outward. This youthfulness is maintained by the mechanism of sea floor spreading. The ocean drilling program with its drilling ship, the JOIDES or Joy Desk Resolution, replaced the deep sea drilling project in 1983. This re-entry cone on board, the JOIDES resolution, can re-enter drill holes in the seafloor that were initially drilled earlier. Positioning of the cone is done by using the either sonar or underwater television system. The Ocean Drilling Program has been renamed the International Ocean Discovery Program or IODP and uses multiple vessels to explore the oceanic crest. Earthquakes are caused by the sudden and rapid shift of the one block of rock slipping past another, along fractures in Earth's crust called faults. We will investigate the connection between the distribution of earthquake and location of plate boundaries. As the theory of plate tectonic was being developed, seismologists or the scientists who research earthquakes demonstrated how well this theory explained the global distribution of earthquakes. It is easy to see the effects of earthquakes in populated areas. But how do seismologists determine the location of earthquakes that occur in remote areas on land or in the ocean? When an earthquake occurs, it releases large amount of energy in form of seismic waves. These waves radiate from the source called the focus through the lithosphere and deep into the Earth's interior. To locate an earthquake on a map, seismologists first plot the epicenter, the point on Earth's surface that lies directly above the focus. During an earthquake, an instrument, an instrument called seismograph can record the types of speed of seismic wave. The seismograph has really suspended weight from a support that is attached to the ground. The inertia of the suspended weight keeps it motionless, while the recording drama and support vibrates in response to seismic waves generated from a distance earthquake. 
Seismologies observe the difference velocities between P waves and S waves recorded in seismogram. The farther the recording station is from the focus, the greater the difference in arrival times. From many seismograms, a travel time graph is plotted to determine the distance to an earthquake's epicenter. The difference in arrival times of the first P and S waves in this example is 5 minutes. So the distance from the epicenter is 3,700 kilometers at this time of interval. About 95% of the energy released by an earthquake originate in few narrow zones. The zone of greatest earthquake activity called Circum Pacific Belt is located along the convergent boundaries in the blue lines and transform plate boundaries in the green line at the edges of the Pacific Ocean. Two plates move toward each other at convergent plate boundaries. These plates have destructive plate margin where the leading edge of one plate is bent downward as it slides beneath the other. Another belt system where many earthquakes occur extends through the world's oceans along the oceanic ridge system. Many of the Earth's divergent in yellow line and transform in green plate boundaries exist along this belt. Divergent plate boundaries is occur when two plates move away from each other. New magma rises from the mantle and cools into a new oceanic lithosphere. Why do most earthquakes occur along the plate boundaries? Earthquakes occur in Earth's cool, rigid outermost layer called the lithosphere because Earth's plate's position are constantly changing. There is movement on Earth's lithosphere along plate boundaries. A track in the Earth's lithosphere deformed, it bends, storing elastic energy like a stretch rubber band. Once the strength of the rock is strained beyond its breaking point, it ruptures, causing slippage along a fault. This releases stored up energy as vibrations of an earthquake. The rock on each side of the fault snaps back to its original shape. This springing back action is called the elastic rebound. Along transform fault, two plates grind past each other. An example of this is the San Andreas Fault that separate the North American Plate and the Pacific Plate. Notice also that only shallow focus earthquakes occur near transform plate boundaries, which is shown in green. At convergent boundary, the descending slab of oceanic lithosphere is bent and interact with the overriding plate. In this case, the continental lithosphere to generate a shallow focus earthquake. As the cold rigid slab descends further into the asthenosphere or the upper part of the mantle, forces acting on it generates an earthquake at greater depth called the intermediate focus earthquake. Because the earthquakes occur within the rigid subducting plate rather than within the hot asthenosphere, they provide a method of tracking the plate's descent as shown by deep focus earthquake. Shallow focus earthquake occur along divergent and transform plate boundaries and shallow intermediate and deep focus earthquake occur along convergent boundaries. This data ties the type of earthquake to specific type of plate boundaries and provides an important evidence to support the theory of plate tectonics. Investigating the hotspot. During scientific expeditions to map the floor of the Pacific Ocean, several long chain of sea mounts were discovered. A sea mounts are small volcanic submerged cone-like features. A particularly large chain consisting of both sea mounts and islands extends from the Hawaiian Islands to the Aleutian Trench. It encompasses the islands of Hawaii on the, on the eastern end and Midway Island, near the western end of the Hawaiian Islands. From there, it angles north, past to Suiko Seamount. This entire chain is called the Hawaiian Island Emperor Seamount Chain. Radiometric dating shows that these volcanic features increase in age the further away they are from the big island of Hawaii. Hawaii was formed less than 1 million years ago. Midway Islands are 27 mi million years old and Soikom Seamount is about 65 million years old. 
Notice that within the Hawaiian Islands, the age also increases from the southeast to the northwest. Hawaii has been volcanically active from 0.7 million years ago to today. Kauai contain inactive volcanoes that formed from 3.8 to 5.6 million years ago. What caused the formation of these volcanic islands? Researchers have determined that a mantle plume is located directly under the island of Hawaii. The rising mantle plume consists of magma or the hot rock generated in the asthenosphere or the upper mantle. At Earth's surface, the plume creates an area of volcanic activity known as a hot spot. Of the five large islands in the Hawaii chain, Kauai is the oldest about 4 to 5 million years ago. It was located right over the hot spot. At that time, it was the only Hawaiian island. As time went along, additional islands form a hot spot track. Hawaii is the last island in the chain. The eroded cliffs, jagged mountains, and deep canyons show the remnants of ancient volcanoes on the island of Kauai. Two, two of the Hawaii's volcanoes, the Moana Loa and Kauai, remain active. By comparison, the slope of the young island of Hawaii shows smooth, fresh lava flows. Hot spot last long time and may remain active for over 100 million years. So hot spot track can help determine the direction of the plate moves. Notice the sharp bend in Hawaii Island Emperor Seamount chain. The older Emperor Seamount formed when the Pacific Basin was moving nearly due to the north. The Hawaiian island chain formed later. After the plate motion had shifted more to the northwest, scientists can also use the age of volcanic structures to determine the speed of plate moving. There are at least 40 active hotspots have been identified and probably many more that exist around the world. Find the hotspot where the geyser named Old Plate Pool is located. The hotspots centered on Yellowstone National Parks feature hot springs and geysers, revealing the presence of magma bodies and hot wreck underground. Water in a hot spring is warmer than the main air temperature of that area. Geysers are intermittent hot springs or fountains that eject columns of water up to 60 meters or 200 feet high. An old paint pool eject hot water into the air every 65 to 90 minutes. Investigating the plate motion, we can see the effect of the movement of the lithospheric plates across the Earth's surface. But what drives this motion? Scientists have basic understanding of what causes plates to move, but what exactly occurs deep in the Earth's interior is a subject of debate. Most people agree that an equal distribution of heat within Earth is the underlying driving force for plate movement. The core is up to 6,000 degrees Celsius or 10,832 degrees Fahrenheit and the Earth's surface is about 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit. The mantle is the major source of Earth's energy. The asthenosphere or upper mantle is a hot, weak, mobile layer of rock that is subject to melting and allows the cool, rigid lithosphere to move. This uneven temperature distribution within Earth causes a method of heat transfer called convection. Where warm, less dense rock rises and cooler, more dense material sinks. This is similar to a pot of boiling water. The water at the base is heated, becomes less dense and rises. Cooler, denser water at the surface sinks. One of the early proposals that large convection cells develop in the mantle. Hot rock rises from the base of the mantle near the top. The flow in the mantle spread the lithosphere horizontally, carrying it away from the oceanic ridge. It then cools and sinks back into the mantle. We now know that lithospheric plates are more than just passengers riding on the mantle convection flow. Subducting oceanic plates are more dense than upper mantle and drive the downward part of the convective flow. As this cold dense slab of oceanic lithosphere into the mantle, they pull the trailing plate down. 
The phenomenon is called slab pool. As the hot rock moves away from the oceanic ridge, it cools, becomes more dense, and sinks back into the mantle at trenches. Slab pool is thought to be the primary force driving plate motions. Another important driving force is ridge push. Movement occurs because of the elevated position of the oceanic ridge system. Due to gravity, a newly created oceanic lithosphere literally slides down the planks of the ridge. Then ridge push is less a factor in plate motion than slab pull. Two main factors contribute to the upward part of the convective flow of mantle. The first factor are hot, buoyant mantle plumes that rises from the outer core to the earth's surface. Notice that hot spot at the top of this mantle plume similar to what exists in Hawaiian islands. A mantle plume can also occur beneath the continents. The, uh, the other factor is a shallow upwelling of hot rock or magma and that occurs below the oceanic ridge crest. As the plates spread apart, fractures created in the oceanic crust fill with this molten rock that rises up from the mantle. This molten material cools, producing new silvers of seafloor and generating new lithosphere that moves away from the ridge crest. This process is called the seafloor spreading. Shown here is the one model of mantle convection where the cold oceanic lithosphere sinks to great depth and affect the entire mantle. There are two types of plumes exist in this model, long narrow tube-like plume and giant upwelling called mega plumes that cover a large area. This internal activity can cause volcanoes, earthquakes, mountain building, and island formation of the Earth's surface. Investigating the plate tectonic theory, to complete our investigation, it is important to look up how plate tectonic has affected Earth through time. Plate tectonics has operated for at least 2 billion years. What did the Earth look like before Pangaea and what will the future hold? We know that Pangaea was the most recent, but not only the supercontinent to exist in the Earth's geologic past. Pangaea began to break up about 165 million years ago and the position of this fragment continued to move across the globe. We can see that some of these pieces are joining together again to form a new supercontinent as evidenced by collision of India with Asia. The separation of one supercontinent into similar pieces followed by a period where the fragments are gradually resembled into a new supercontinent having a different configuration called supercontinent cycle. Although Earth's total size does not change, the size and shape of individual plates are continually changing. As a result of plate motion, the plate boundaries are also changing. Two geologists, Robert Dietz and John Holden, have projected present-day plate movement to build the billion years into the future. In North America, Mexico, Baja Peninsula, and the portion of Southern California that currently lies west in the San Andreas Fault will perhaps more move northward, sliding past the North American plate. If this movement occurs, Long Angeles and San Francisco will pass each other in roughly 10 million years and about 50 million years later. This fragment may collide with Alaska. About the same time, changes will also occur in Africa, where the new sea will emerge as East Africa separate from the mainland. Africa will move toward Eurasia, closing the Persian Gulf. This could start another major mountain building event. Australia and New Guinea are on track to move north, pushing the Philippines with them as they collide with the Southeast Asia. The collision of Africa and Australia with Eurasia will result in one large landmass. If North and South America continue their westward motion and Eurasia continue its eastward drift, all this continent could join to create another supercontinent. Although plate tectonics is helpful in explaining the large-scale geologic processes operating on Earth, it is not completely understood. 
With more data and investigation, specific details of this theory will continue to be developed and verified to show that it is the driving force dynamic changes on the Earth. Thank you very much for listening and that will end up or that would end up our discussion about light tectonics. Thank you to TASA Graphic Arts Incorporated illustrated by Dennis TASA and this PowerPoint presentation was programmed and produced by Dan Pickenton and Cindy Robinson and Karen TASA. Thank you very much guys and have a good day.